Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video we'll go over when we're supposed to harass in lane, where we're supposed to play aggressive, basically just the laning stage part of the game, in terms of aggression, mostly. If you like this type of content, go to gamersclass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch masterclasses with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your ranked games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. So in this game I was playing Terrorblade, I had PPD in my team. Uh, he was playing Enchantress. As you can see I instantly go in and press Metamorphosis. Because I'm a, we're two range heroes when I have Metamorphosis in this lane. Against Tidehunter and uh, Tusk. So it's pretty easy to just outrust them and take every less hit. You know, uh, as you can see, he was forced to press Gosh for a last hit, which is 100 mana. Obviously, he doesn't really have uh, doesn't really have enough mana to secure every single last hit with this, or even do it reliably. That's why he got two mangos. So as you can see, afterwards I just take Q. Uh, buffed, it got buffed a bit, reflection, and as you can see, Titan is 300 HP. Task is also 300 HP. It's a really good harass because of this. And I can basically free farm while they're getting harassed. Oh, the next point um, where we can be super aggressive is Enchantress level 2. Since he got Nature's Attendance level 1, it, this doesn't really do anything, it just heals yourself. So we need level 2 to play even more aggressive. That's why I got this, one of the reasons I mean. As you can see right here, they're trading, they're trading, and then Enchantress got level 2. I see that, I get. Uh, I just reflection them, press the reflection, and we can get a kill because of this. So it's obviously really good to pay attention to your supports, their spells and stuff like that. One good example would be Lion. I've seen people go for uh, Mana Drain level 2, and I think that's pretty bad most of the cases. Because instead of having two disabled, just, you have just one. So it's obviously not that great. Because Mana Drain can also get cancelled, it has decently long cooldown and you know it doesn't really affect the game in any way if you get uh, killed or anything like that so you can't really help your carry that much from level 1 to level 3 slash level 4 whenever you're getting uh, the second disable as you can see right here I'm trying to play aggressive again Tadhunter isn't really full HP has 500 HP has no armor no items I noticed that and then it just press reflection again this is the moment when I can play aggressive. It's also really, really good because I can secure the last hit with it. Let's just uh, rewind a bit. As you can see, creeps are kind of low. I drag the creeps towards my range creep. And then I go take this last hit. I'm posture aggressively right now. I know this creep is going to die most likely. They're range creep, so I'm going to secure it. It's a lot harder to do it if, you know, there are creeps there and they, they can go on me. So that's why I just reflection them. Press reflection and later forced to go back. And I, as you guys saw, as you saw, uh, Dusk wanted to take the last hit. And then I can even deny this one and secure all these two, uh, these two melee creeps also. So it's really important to know when to play aggressive and when to not. I also just got five tangos. Since I know this lane, Enchantress wants to leave. To either get her bounty right there or take a rune or take a creep since this is blocked. Uh, she simply wants to. Uh, she simply wants to leave afterwards and I will be under heavy harass because of that. So right now this guy is super low because of the harass that we applied on him before. So now we can get a kill because I have metamorphosis one. So that's why I just push it up. I don't really care about the lessons. Lessons don't really matter if you take a kill. I mean obviously you don't want to miss every single lesson but if you can get kills and harass the opponents it's usually better to do it. So just go on. This guy, they didn't know I had meta because I didn't press it until I hit them in belief form. So it makes it harder for them to run away. As you can see, I only missed one less hit. And I got a gold out of it. Obviously the kill and he lost a bit of experience. Now I'm really, really strong right here. I can deny a bit of less hits. And you just simply uh, go jungle right now because the gender has left. And you have no metamorphosis. So I can't really be aggressive anymore. There's no way I can be aggressive, since the Jedrez is not with me. Even though she has two souls and stuff like that, she's going for mid right now. I believe she's going to pink, or she already pinged. 
So I know that that is going to happen. I see Tusk right there on the bottom, as you can see. And Jenner is going to give vision of him right there. So I obviously saw it because I was watching there and on the minimap. So I can go back to the lane right now because it's not a 2v1 situation. And this is when the words are, I mean, the tangos are going to come in handy. As you can see, it's just gonna double you me a lot since I, I'm not in a metamorphosis form. This is a bug. So that's why I need this because I see will just be able to harass me out. Tether is coming back right now. So I can like see I'm half HP. So yeah, I can hit him a bit. We try to kill him, but it's not really possible right now because I have no metamorphosis and he's really, really strong. Because of the uh, anchor smash, 40% damage reduction. There's no no way we can kill him. So this is sort of the laning stage of game one that we're going to go over. This is the second game one, uh, sort of go over the laning stage. As you can see, I believe the items were the same. When you're playing position one or any other role, items should be very very similar in each game and this is mostly what you go on carry even on some uh, range hero heroes i choose to go quelling blade because they're low space damage such as gyrocopter maybe in some games so throw even luna also so this is why i got this build simply because you need more damage to trade and also you know take less hits one situation where you might want to Different this build would be whenever you're playing against the bat rider, pistol bag, or a lot of heroes that want to cast spells on you. So you might want to get a stick instead of, you know, circlet or supposed of agility. And um, the build should be without supposed of agility or circlet. You go for stick and then two branches, and you still get the two plus two attributes because of the branches. And then you can upgrade that into a magic wand. This game. As you can see, I hit them right whenever they're trying to get a last hit. That is when I can hit them. It's really, really important to do that. As you can see, this guy's going for the range grip. And I just hit him. Uh, this is really, really important to do. Just hit opponents whenever they're trying to take a last hit. It doesn't really matter if they take the last hit. Since you can get like two or three hits off, especially if you have another supporter. And you can hit him again. Like With him, it's like five hits for securing one last hit. Which is not really that great for them. Because that's more than a tango. I mean, there is a tango, so, you know, they're losing a lot of HP. And then you can play aggressive on them. Obviously, in this lane, you also always have to pay attention to your support. If you're mid, it's obvious that, you know, uh, you don't have to pay attention to supports as much since it's 1v1, usually. But you have to pay attention to your support spells. In this game, I have a Phoenix. I had uh, 50 second, 51 second cooldown on W. So that's a really long cooldown. I know that this guy is useless whenever he doesn't have this. So when he uses the fire spirit, I can play aggressive. So right now, I believe that is exactly what I'm going to do. Because this guy uh, used it, I sort of tried to help him, I believe. Never mind, I just walked towards him. It was kind of a bad position to use this, since the wave was pushing towards us. And they can't really contest us on their tower, as you can see. He's going to press now, trying to get a kill here, but he just... Uh, links away, you know, runs away with Tether, I mean. So this was kind of a bad fire spirit usage. She, the wave, as I said, is pushing towards us because of the pull. And now the tower, they can't really contest us. Getting spells, I mean, I, leveling up is really important. As you can see right here, I don't get time mock level 2, I don't get bash level 2. I'm holding it for time dilation. Since if they want to play aggressive, for example, right now, it's an important moment to understand that we can play aggressive since we have two rage groups right here the creep, creep, uh, creep equilibrium is going towards the enemies one guy is kind of low even though he has a salve and a tango it doesn't really matter because we have five creeps with us 23 damage each rage creeps 21 damage so we have like 100 damage above them if we just right click we have five creeps they have none so this is the moment you want to play aggressive also if your support is not pulling right here because if he were to pull there is no camp here, I believe. But if you were to pull, you want to just sort of take experience and chill in the trees. But since this guy is here, you can sort of hit them. As you can see, they're already sort of low because I stopped the pull before. Another thing that you want to do is 
try to drag the creeps towards you and make the opponents uh, exactly like I'm doing right now. As you saw in the first wave, I believe, Ursa just has to walk up to hit the range creeps. And I'm able to hit him back while he's taking the lessons. So he's sort of out of position. Also, this secures the lessons. This secures the lessons because they can't really walk up into all these creeps and Phoenix are right there hitting them. So they run onto Phoenix right now. I This is the really important. I kept the point. I get W right now since they press spells. This guy slowed. That's a first blood, I believe. Use the fairy fire. Doesn't really matter. It's a first blood. I mean, not a first blood. It's first kill, first kill in this lane. Then I went for Band of Elven Skin because it's really important. I understand what's going on in this lane. It's only trading. I can't really kill them unless they're being stupid. Since we don't have any stuns. Unless, you know, I get three patches in or something like that. But all that matters is securing lessons. Which is exactly what I'm trying to do in this lane. This lane is sort of over right now. We should be okay. I believe I died once or Phoenix died once. But it's just because of the uh, misplay. This lane is sort of over right now. And it's really, really good for us. Because they should be destroying us a lot harder. I mean, we're winning this lane. I have exactly the same lessons as Ursa. And his hero is really, really good. Especially with Ayo against mine. Because... Exactly as you can see right here, he can just hit me all over and over again. I get four stacks or whatever, and then I can't really go back to the lane because I still have... Yeah, this is the moment I fucked up. It was like 0 0.5 seconds there on that. I just got slowed over and over again because of the tether. So, yeah. But it is sort of the how the laning stage should have been played up until this moment. Without that, it would be okay. I didn't really see his boots above Venom and also Tether slow. It was really annoying. But this is sort of how to play when your support doesn't have spells that can be used over and over again, such as Lion Stun, let's say, Lina, or anything like that. Since this is super, super big cooldown, as you see, it's really important to understand when to go in and when to not trade with the enemies. In this game I was playing Monkey King safe lane and I had a Weaver position 5 random support. So obviously the lane is decent for me because I'm a Monkey King against the X. However, my support is not really that useful. But the main thing I want to focus on is knowing when the opponents have spells or not. And playing aggressive when in this game I mean. So as you can see right here. I can't really do anything to Windrun. We can't really do anything to Windrun whenever she presses Windrun. So as soon as she presses Windrun, I noticed before the excess boots. So I can't really go on this guy that freely. Unless, you know, he's out of position, sort of. So I see Windrun presses Windrun. We go on this X, right? Exactly right now. He got a lot of damage. But the main thing that I was trying to do right here, even though it didn't work, because Windrun is all obviously pretty high MMR game, so. Uh, people understand what is happening. As you can see, as soon as I walked up, Windrunner walked back. That was what I was trying to do. I was trying to go on Windrunner instantly, since she doesn't have a winner. She would have been tight here, most likely, if uh, she just hit me once again. But since the X was coming towards us, we just chose to harass him. Chose to harass him instead of Windrunner. However, she was going to die, as you can see. She's like 250 HP. I didn't kill her. I didn't Bondless I mean, or anything like that. Uh, some toxicity by my team. A team by me. Uh, yes. So again, Windrunner press Windrun. You can just go on him. Press some spells. Obviously, try to get a lesson to your spells and also do damage with them. Another carry that can do this would be Gyrocopter, I believe. Since you can just walk in, press rocket barrage and get less hits and also harass the enemy course. I mean that enemy uh, players that are going towards the going towards less hit obviously. As you can see right here, I walked up into the lane very aggressively. I dragged the creeps on my range first. We got a deny out of it. And then I can play super aggressively because I I'm not getting harassed by any creeps right here. And they are really, really low, as you can see. We don't have a salve and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter because X doesn't. So if X gets solved, the other guy... Excuse me. The other guy is very, very low either way. So he bought a salve also. 
we're just trading HP because we know we're stronger. They use two subs right now. We didn't use one sub even. They just use tangos. So it's obviously really good because of that. As you can see, I'm not really missing lessons. I mean, I am sort of, but it's really good because X only has four CS. And the four creeps that he got translated into the gold that he got from the sub. I mean, the, the sub gold. Since they got like two, three bounties or whatever, he doesn't have any gold, any gold anymore from lessons. So it doesn't really matter if I miss some lessons, if the opponents also miss lessons in a favorable matchup. Because this matchup is going to get even better for me because of the nature of the heroes. Since I have bought Jingle Mastery and stuff like that, it's a really good form. So right now the wave is just pushing and pushing. This we this uh, weaver should have pulled a lot since we want the wave to be as close to our tower as possible. I believe I got a boots right now. Yeah, boots and sentry. I'm going to reward. Not this word, not this center. I mean, I'm going to do what here since I knew that they had a word there. So what we should have done, which, you know, this guy was a bit better or, you know, uh, we should have diverted this and I was going to push the, every single wave in since they can't really contest me. X can't come close to me because of Jingle Mastery. So it's really hard for them. I just uh, use one tongue every wave, probably because of Windrunner hitting me. And they have to, they're forced to play here. They would be forced to play here. And then since I get a lot more gold than the X, I can buy boots faster than him. I mean, he started with boots, but I can buy boots and Orbo Venom faster than he can get another item that can be useful. So I'm going to be able to do a lot more if the wave would be here, which is where it should have been. If uh, if Weaver could have just pulled this, either Windrunner stops it and comes here. So the wave is 1v1 and I obviously own X as a hero because of the Jingle Mastery. Or if he doesn't stop and then just harass me, we reset the lane and lane is going to be right here, close to our tower. And then it's even harder for them to get lessons. X would have had two lessons maximum if we had any pulls. But it didn't happen, so that's what we should have done in this case. However, as I said, it didn't really happen. Again, I'm holding a point in spell since I don't know what, if I can get three dance to get a kill or if I just go two points in Jigo Mastery. Again, four spells on Windrunner, just harass them. I can just dive this tower right now to get stacks. As you can see, right now I choose to get the third point, I mean the second point in it on my third level, since I knew I was going to get the stacks. So this is the first pull that Windrunner, I mean the Weaver does. However, it's kind of bad since I'm like half HP, should have been done, and he's super low, so we can't really do anything. But they're playing aggressive on me, which is going to cost them their life. They chose to play aggressive there, but it was, they didn't really, they weren't really able to do anything. Since I know my hero super well, I understand the limits. So even though I'm 400 HP right here, X is sort of going back, right? I have a fairy fire and I'm going to heal because of this. Uh, I can just hit them three times, right? So I will be healing. Also, I can dodge with mischief. So if this guy has power shot, which he does, I can dodge it very, very easily. It wasn't really necessary though, because X just died instantly because of uh, the build that he's forced to do. He's forced to go put of speed into a ring of region so he can try to skip. Even though he is going to try to do that, it won't really w do anything. It won't work for them. So this sort of a weird game that the plan should have been to just pull. Just pull there and then we can just play super aggressive on them because it's going to be close to our tower. However, it didn't really work that well, but we're still winning a bit, by a bit. If you watch the network, that's a lot more important than just last it. 300 gold above him with Weaver position 5. If this guy was Leech, Shadow Shaman, Lion, any hero with the stun, disable, or anything slow, it would have been really, really good for us, a lot better. As you can see, X is trying to pull, I mean to creep skip because of the ring right now. However, we were just going to try to contest him. It was really, really good by him since X takes a lot of damage because of the medallion, since he has no armor, minus 5 armor, I mean minus 2 armor in total. 
So this guy just wasting his time right there. The main reason why he left is because he noticed that I got level 2 in Jingo Mastery and also Orb of Venom. So it's really hard for them to lane anymore. So in this case, they were forced to leave the lane either way. Because else he wasn't going to get any less hit and he most likely would have fed there. Right now, 500 above him when he was uh, 300 gold when he TP'd in. And he's super low as you can see. And again, just holding the spell. As you can see, I didn't, I didn't skill it until I saw that X is super low and I can get W. And a ping that I want to go and I skill this, I press my spells, X is dead. So it's just a lot of little concepts that we need to apply every single game if we want to win laning stage which is super super important since everything just every game has a laning stage but no game i mean some games don't have a mid game some games don't have a late game so this is sort of the most important part of the game because of how much you can control by winning the laning stage only so it's really, really important to Understand laning stage and understanding laning stage and uh, when to play aggressive, when to not play aggressive. So this is a really important moment that I was just baiting the enemies. I'm 500 HP. They know I have no mana. They hit me. They press spells on me. The guy presses wind run. This guy goes in. Again, it's super important that we know we sort of count when they have spells or don't have spells. Mentally, you know, we keep a check on the spells. Any escapes, for example, leaps on Mirana, Queen of Pain Blinks, Spark, Coils, a lot of stuff. It's really important to uh, understand that, that type of stuff. So, again, I just get another point in this, even though I'm level 5 and something. Because I knew I changed my plan, you know. Usually, you just want to max W and then. Uh, farm a lot with this three dance but there are four melee heroes mid is getting owned top is doing okay bottom is really good for us so i can just max w and just run at the enemies since we're a lot stronger than them and this is exactly what i'm going to do and my build reflects that also i need magic stick so i can just trade a bit better orb of venom so i can secure jingle mastery face boots again so i can secure jingle mastery and they only have physical damage so that's why i went for uh face boots which is really, really important. In this game, I want to focus on constant pressure and constant harass on the enemies. And also noticing when the opponents are leaving the lane or, and what they're doing. Which is another super important thing that uh, you want to pay attention to. One thing that is going to come up in this game is Skyrat Mage leaving and going mid to help. Because it's a Monkey King mid versus uh, Bristol Backstones. Obviously a really good lane for us on the mid lane. So as you can see right here, I don't care about lessons. This guy is... I can just hit him since we're two range heroes against melee and uh, sky damage which is a range hero but the main point about it is that we have lower cooldown spells and better spells than a centaur centaur has to walk to me to get a stomp which he won't be getting because i'm a range hero as you can see i just did 200 damage off him even though this guy's out of position sort of it's still okay because we can just stay continuously and Obviously support HP is, I don't really care about my support uh, losing HP if the opponent core is losing HP because it's going to be a lot harder for them to less it and play aggressive. As you can see, I just ping this guy, he's like 300 HP just by me constantly harassing him. And Dazzle didn't even kill him, he went on sky damage for no reason. Uh, I was going to tell him, I am going to tell him that soon. Obviously we won't be seeing it in this but i i remember clearly that i uh, told him so this is just abusing that you're a range hero and they're melee hero then you also have better trade and continuous trade as you saw i did i dealt like a thousand damage to this guy just by right clicking and he doesn't really have anything to do towards me so he doesn't have retaliate yet as you can see just kite back kite back even though creep is slow hp if dazzle was closer to me that was a kill right there let's see so he's 400 something HP. He doesn't really, he isn't really able to get a stomp off on me because I'm running back. Okay, then is where he could have done it. But if Dazzle was closer, you know, probably could have killed him if he went like this, maybe. But it's still okay. 
since I forced Sky Damage W, Sky Damage is pretty low. This guy was doing a great job of trading with him. However, I really wanted him to trade with Centaur because we could have gotten a kill. I can't really help him with Sky Damage, it's a rage hero, but Centaur has to sit in wave to get less hits since it's the core. So it's a lot easier to kill him than Sky Damage. So right now I'm under tower, getting some less hits, but I really want this kill. It's really, really important to get a kill. As you can see, I was sort of trading less hits with him. I mean, harass for less hits, because I can't really deny less hits over Centaur because of base damage that he gets and stuff like that. Base damage at Quelling Blade, I can't really do it. However, I can out harass him. So that's the really important thing that I'm trying to do. He's still low, even though he bought a lot of tangos, used a lot of tangos, he has assault, but he can't really use it. So right now I'm just going for him. Dazzle keeps going on Sky Damage, which is really, really annoying. Sky Damage doesn't matter. If he just attacked Centaur over and over again instead of Sky Damage, he would have had 5 less hits instead of 9. Or even lower, probably even lower. And obviously harassing a core is more important than uh, support. Since I don't really care about Sky Damage harassing me. If Centaur is also low HP, I can still get the less hits since I'm a range hero and he can't really do anything about it. But we got a kill, so it's really good. Now the wave is close to my tower, so it's again really, really important that I can... Oh, this is a trick that I'm not sure if you guys know. If there are, isn't really a hero in your lane, as you can see right here, you can watch another lane and right-click a hero from somewhere else. I right-click the bristle back mid and drag the creeps towards my rage creep so I can deny it. So the wave uh, sits close to my tower instead of pushing. Pretty neat uh, trick to know, actually. It's really, really useful, especially if you just got like a kill exactly like there, or the opponents are healing, something like that, and you want to just control the wave better. My items reflect what I was trying to do. I didn't really buy tangos, more tangos or stuff just right now, since I know I'm going to take some damage because of the retaliate. But I knew I really, I didn't really need it before, and obviously just want to rush glove, uh, rush gloves of face the Midas since I'm playing a sky damage. And I just went for stick because it's really important if Sky Damage just continuously presses spells on me. So right now I see Sky Damage me. I'm pinging here to go on this guy. But my Dazzle doesn't really understand that I believe. Or it's just late. I ping, Sky Damage is missing. I see mid, I ping mid, that he is mid. So I want this guy to go on him. I'm trying to bait right there. Just uh, sitting close to the tower but also, I mean close to here. And I can just obviously just go on him since he doesn't have a TP. I know that because we just TP to the lane. But even if he had a TP, it would be really, really good because we just have to walk back to the lane. And because of that, my dazzle could have just pulled and I have I can get solo experience, which is really good. I also bought clarities, which is super, super important because I need mana to get kills. I can really just right click them down that well. But every single thing that I'm doing here reflects what I try to do in the lane. And my pings and everything, my communication just reflects. Okay, I wanna kill, sky damage is there, look at the map, we can go right now. You know, stuff like that. Right now, after we got a kill, I knew I forced uh, sky damage back to the lane. Because I'm sure Centaur said something, oh, why are you leaving, blah blah. So I tried to play more defensive, as you can see, right there. I just sit close to the tower. This is a pretty important thing that I'm doing right now. Which is really important. I don't know how many of you do it. Look at my screen. How I'm centering my screen. It's here. This is the center of my screen where the mouse is. I don't need any information here. Or here. Or usually people do like this. You know, middle of the... Their hero is in the middle of the screen. Which is kind of bad. It's really bad. This is what a normal player would do, I believe. To just... And this is a lot of space that you're wasting up top that you don't really use for anything because no hero is going to come from here there's no gang coming there's nothing here so it, simply by doing this you get a lot more information if someone's coming from here i know it instantly if someone comes from this area i know it i know everything that's going on up here i don't need any information above where my tower is so this also enables me to play more aggressively because i have more information of what's going on as you can see right here, I still see my hero, but it's, I see a lot more than, you know, 
just a creep wave or anything like that. I have a lot more information to gather and make my decision from. As you can see, I constantly just rearrange my screen to uh, to a better position. I have a lot more information that I can use to get kills or do anything with it. So this is close to when the lane stage is over soon, I believe. I'm being a Skyrim mage. As you guys here, they're missing, but uh, I wanted to make sure that my teammates know, especially my Dazzle, since if the Skyrim mage is leaving the lane, we instantly run at this guy. He can't really do anything. He has a ring of uh, regen or whatever it's called. Ring of health. So he's not really doing anything with it. Skyrim mage is leaving right now. And I all I'm focusing in is getting my Midas. I also get level 6. And then I can do stuff with my clone also. And the Midas. But this is sort of when the landing stage is over. Thanks for watching the video guys. Have a nice day.